okay, uh, this part of talk for C pure C++ 2020 uh, is about uh, how you can effectively use concept uh, in embedded programming or just a non-generic programming context. Um, so I'm going to talk about how you can lift uh, some structural constraints that are usually very far around time to compile time so you achieve uh, some uh, partial evaluation and and so you, you you take away things that are computed repeatedly at runtime you lift that compile time that becomes the job of a compiler so that you can only focus on what is actually essential at runtime so that is the focus of this talk uh, let's get started. So let's get into it. How would you pick safely at a table doing so with concept? So imagine that you have a programming task where uh, you need to go through tables and when you go through a table you look at an entry and then you perform an action based on what you found at that entry in the table. Uh, here is an abstract representation of that scenario. We have a set of actions to take. So that set of actions is represented here by an enum class, a well behaved enum, you know, zero, one, may. And then for each action, we read a script and then we perform something based on that script. So the code that run the script, we call that an actor. So in our situation here, where we have actions zero, one, and many, we have actors zero, actor one, and actor many. And the mapping from an action to an actor is a play, and, and, and we record all the plays in a table that we call action map that has the structure of a key value pair uh, table. You know, the key here I will say is the action and the corresponding value will be the actor. So uh, going through the table and performing an action is very simple basic programming task. All we have to do is to carefully going through the table, inspecting each entry and asking if what we found there is the action we're asked to perform. And if that is so, we just retrieve the corresponding actor and ask it to run this script and then return a value. If we didn't find anything, then we will return minus one to indicate error. As a matter of fact, if the actor also ran into some trouble, it will return some numerical value to indicate error. Basic. Okay. Now, uh, this code will run perfectly, will do what it's supposed to do. The additional concern here is that we want to perform these tasks while being efficient. So the first idea is to say, hey, these actions are actually numerical values, consecutive numerical values, and you're most likely to have as many actions as we have actors. All we need to do is to check that we have the action inbound. So it must be at least zero and it must be less than many. And if so, then we retrieve the numerical representation of the action, use that 
to retrieve the corresponding entry in the action map table, ask the actor to run the script and return. This is close to optimal efficiency. And we might be tempted to say, hey, we're done. Let's go get uh, go home and, and have fun. Well, not so fast. What happens if the action map, that table that maps an action to an actor, happens to have a hold on the maintenance? Someone remove, retires an action or someone adds something that is not there. Well, uh, in that case, in the case there's a hole in the map table, we have a bound safety problem. Even though the action might be within bound of the number of actions, the numerical value may not be in bound in terms of the size of the table. So, boom, we get a problem. There are many ways of fixing this, and one that I want to show in this short presentation is how we can use concept to elegantly uh, solve that problem in a way that is reusable, therefore generic. So I guess the first question that will pop to mind is what are concepts? The first other approximation is that a concept is a predicate of a types and compile time value. <coughs> so typically, we will use concept to express the expectations of a function template on its template argument. Okay. And this provides the bedrock of principled generic programming, structured generic programming, the way Alex Stepanov does it. Okay, which is very successful. Look at the STL and all the many libraries that have been modeled after the approach taken by Stepanov. Concept being predicates can be composed and are composed uh, via the conventional logical operators, conjunction, disjunction, and negation. The interesting thing they bring to the table is that they allow us programmers to express directly in code our intent. Okay, that gives you a better structure to code and relegates the hackery sphene stuff to you know places we don't want to hear them from again and it allows us language designer to bring generic programming to the masses to make generic programming looks like just programming that has been one of the major goals behind concept as a benefit of being disciplined, bringing structure to the programs, we get partial evaluation for free. I'm going to uh, explain what I mean shortly. But before that, how do you use a concept? Well, most of us will not have to define concept. We will just use concepts defined by someone else. So C++20 comes with uh, some basic foundational concepts. You find them in the standard header concept. Okay, you can use them to declare template parameters and place combined constraints on function template parameters. Okay, or if you within you know, normal programming can use them to require some structural checking on the type of a local variable. Okay. And as an example here on the right side, I have a function that I want to use to compute the minimum number of bits required to express 
a natural number. So here I will take unsigned int as a natural number or unsigned long or unsigned long long as a representation of natural number. Okay. And after that definition, where I have the template parameter t, which is a type of the value, here I'm declaring just like I'll declare normal uh, variable. Uh, I declare with uh, the concept unsigned integral. So unsigned integral is a standard concept. It is a predicate. Okay. It takes only one type parameter and check whether that parameter type is uh, an integral type according to the standard definition of integral type, unsigned integral type. So if I call a function length with uh, a manifestly unsigned integral, you know, the call would just succeed. If, on the other hand, I try it with double, the compiler would like, yeah, I don't think that will work. Or if I try to call that function length with a manifestly negative number, we also get a feedback, no, can't do. Okay, so this brings additional type safety at the use sites of templates. Now, how do you go by defining your own concept? I will get there shortly, but do remember that concepts are compile time predicates. Now, in the context of the problems that we have, which is that we have a table that we want to ensure doesn't have a hole in it. All the entries are filled linearly from zero up to the end. There is no hole in between. I call that a retractable space. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is to define a compile time predicate that check for that property. So again, that predicate is take the table, go through it, and at in each entry, check whether the key is numerically the same as the action, the the, the, the position in, in the uh, in, in the table. If that is true, we're done. If that, then return false. Basic thing. So this function is declared const expert so that we can use it at compile time with compile time value with a compile time table. Okay. So if we only had C plus fourteen, we will actually say something like this. We will have our table and then we will ask the compiler at top level, static assert, please verify that the action map table satisfies the predicate retractable by key. And given what we have, the compiler will go think about it and we come back to, yeah, I think that's, that's true. And now that we have that compile time predicate, we have statically verified the structure, the algebraic structure of the table we can just go in the perform function, check that the runtime value of act is at least zero and less than the size of the table and use that numerical value to index into the table, retrieve the actor, run the script, and then return whatever is the outcome of the script. So we can express all this safely using generic programming techniques not concept to express this. So you will say, we're done. Why do we need uh, concepts? Is this just being fancy? Not exactly. One thing I want to uh, emphasize here is that this is just one um, table, action map. Usually you'll have many tables like these in, in, in structure. And you like to be able to ensure that when you, call, when you try to index into these tables, these properties of being retractable by key are automatically verified with that you having to uh, 
duplicates the static assert every time. It becomes tedious, right? So the uh, the one point of theory programming is being lazy, safe, and being lazy with class. Okay. So how can we go from this place where we are, which is a safe ground, to a and then a higher ground that requires less typing if the map you happen to have many of them. So the way we do that is first by defining a concept, turning that um, predicate into a, a, a higher level uh, predicate that we call concept. So here we introduce the concept retractable by key the declaration, the definition here looks like we have a template, but it is not a template. It is a concept. And we know it is a concept because we use the keyword concept. And the definition is by running this predicate, uh, tracked by key, it's function predicate, uh, tracked by key on the table, which is a template non type parameter. Okay. So, once we have that, now we can abstract over the table that you know, we're going to have an instance of in the program and have a function that retrieves the play entry from the table uh, by looking at the corresponding uh, action, right? So here, the function template play entry has the usual template parameters, but additionally has this thing that we call the requires clause that says, oh, by the way, I do require that this compile time value table satisfy the predicate retractable by key. Okay, and once we know that, we will just take the numerical value of action look into that table that is provided as a template parameter and then return the corresponding entry. So this is basically where we wanted to go. It's almost there, except that that numerical value of action might potentially be as of bound. No problem. Um, when we get to actually call that function, we just assert that the value is indeed inbound. And then we call that function and then we're done. We're done because now we still retain the constant time, the near optimal efficiency while remaining safe, bound safe, memory safe. And we have done so by being completely agnostic of the kind of table. The only thing we need from the table is that it is retractable by key. And now any other table that has the same property, we can use the same function to retrieve the entry and perform the same kind of operation with optimal efficiency. So the summary of this technique is that you look at your code and look at what kind of structure does the data type, the data that I'm, modify, I'm playing with, have. And then turn that into some kind of predicates that can be evaluated at compile time. And then abstracting over the specific data so that at compile time, you can perform an action only if the, uh, the guards, the, the predicate that guard the action is satisfied. So your compiler will never generate codes for something that is faulty. So uh, just as a summary, this is where the left side is where we were. We have a linear search and the right side is where we ended up, where we move the structure of the table, the algebraic structure of the table into a predicate that the compiler can verify. And then we take the residual, which is the things that requires runtime value, and then only do that efficiently. We have removed the inefficiency. We have partially evaluated the algebraic structure of the table and of the computation, and then evaluates the compile time part of it 
and letting the residual to the runtime. So this, I hope you can generalize uh, to tables that are not just retractable by key, but have some other algebraic properties, like, you know, the entries could be strings and things are sorted by key. And, you know, you, only your imagination is the limit. However, what I want you to also retain is to use concept early, to use concepts often. Okay? Thank you very much for watching. Okay, so um, I hope you, you got the essence of this talk, which is when you're doing some computations that have structures, that they always do, you know, sometimes when it's not obvious, they always have structures, but please pay attention to that. Um, I hope you got the essence of the techniques and you're able to apply that to your day-to-day -day programming job. Um, I don't think of this as some kind of uh, cute uh, puzzles or brain teaser that make you look smart. I think of this as an effective technique that helps you to be more effective in your day-to-day -day job. Uh, please uh, go try it out. Download your favorite compiler. It could be MSVC, I would prefer, or GCC, or Klein. But please, please try it out and let me know. Uh, give me feedback and I would love to hear from you. Thank you.